Welcome to GMP The Great, Glorious, and Glamorous, aka The Going North Podcast. I'm your host, best-selling author, and certified self-leadership trainer with the John Maxwell team, Dom Brightman. And this is the podcast where authors from around the world help you realize that success is tangible. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the Highlight Reel Builder for authors known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, the Going North podcast. You got another super special, awesome human for you today, folks, because today's guest in particular, a functional nutritionist who's always been passionate about nutrition and good health. That's right, good with all the O's, folks. And she's made her children's baby food from scratch. That's right, so long nails to boot. And she continues to cook, create healthy, nutritious food as well. And she works with a wide array of clients, ranging from professional athletes, adults, and kids, all the way to the biggest loser from season four with issues like diabetes, autoimmune disease, cancer, digestion, thyroid, and hormone imbalances, just to name a few. So let's give it up for Miss RG, not three herself, Miss Risa Grew. How you doing today, Risa? I'm so great. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I got some nutritional swag on the show. It's been <laughs> at least 50 plus episodes since we had one. So this is great. Got to get folks uh, ready, especially with uh, <laughs> seasonal change. And, of course, folks fighting off the COVID-19 poundage and probably some mm-hmm. holiday poundage coming. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> it's always there. <laughs> that's right it's always there and probably here too but hey as you know with all introductions you know a lot a lot to be seven days long so mind filling in any cavities i missed about the radiant risa herself okay well let me fill it in so i am a functional nutritionist and functional meaning i have been trained in functional medicine functional nutrition functional is different than conventional because we look at the body as a whole that everything is interconnected We also look at root causes. So why is it that you're having a headache? Is it because you have a deficiency in medication? I don't think so, right? Why do we have depression? Is it because we have a deficiency in an SSRI? No, it's because there is a root cause uh, uh, causing those headaches or that depression or whatever that symptom may be, there is a root cause. So we're always looking at the root causes, foundational issues. So I look at systemic inflammation and gut health because at the end of the day, it really comes down to those two things, but I'm always looking at root causes to whatever the um, health ailment is. Um, I've been practicing for a long time in Newport Beach, California, and um, I do extensive testing as we do in functional nutrition. So I order pretty extensive blood panels and stool tests for everybody who walks in and a gene mutation called MTHFR that affects our um, bodies a lot. If so, we should all know if we have that. And I do have a book coming out um, soon called Food Frame. Diet is a four letter word. And um, it basically is about every individual is individual and you should be eating to your health status. So whatever your health condition is, you should be eating according to that. Not one size fits all, not every diet is right for every person. We all have that neighbor, that friend, that cousin, coworker that lost 40 pounds doing keto. We tried it and it didn't work for us, right? You know what I'm talking about, Dom, right? So um, that's why it's you have to find out what your food frame is to see what works according uh, best to you. So that is what I do. Um, and I'm very passionate about nutrition. We see amazing, amazing miracles uh, in my office daily. And it's there's no better job, I think, on the planet than watching people heal and reverse diabetes and um and losing weight is a side effect of wellness, so we always focus on wellness here at Risa Grew Nutrition. Oh, yeah, that's right, folks. That's right. She's dropping that hot fire, y'all. That's right, that hot fire, indeed. That's right, because weight loss is a sign of wellness, y'all. And my goodness, so a food frame, so you're basically helping folks get their picture-perfect health? Yeah, because what I found is through the years of dieting myself is since I was a teenager that 
you know, why, why I would always be fascinated. Why does this diet work, but that diet doesn't work? And, and how does the body actually lose weight? And why do we put weight on? And I've done so much extensive research and I've met with, you know, thousands and thousands of clients in my office. And I can tell that every body type is different. And when I look at the blueprint, the blood work, the stool test to see what's going on at the root, you know, is there, is there insulin resistance? Is there inflammation? Are you holding on to iron causing uh, 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 some inflammation in the body? Are we able to lose weight when we are in an inflamed state? Is there an underlying virus like Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus? You know, it goes on and on and on. Thyroid is a big one because we need our thyroid in order to, it's our, our temperature gauge and our metabolism. So if your furnace isn't on and you're doing all the right things, and I hear it all the time, people walk in all the time, I, I exercise every day, I eat extremely well, and I'm not losing weight. Well, there's five reasons why that is, you know, why we don't lose weight. One is thyroid. If your furnace isn't on, you're not burning. The other one is cortisol. That's our stress hormone. So our adrenal glands are, are producing cortisol. And if your cortisol is high or low uh, in adrenal fatigue stages, then it's gonna be very difficult to lose weight. Hormone imbalance. If our hormones are imbalanced, it is very difficult to lose weight. Um, and the other is blood sugar. So if we have insulin resistance, if that means our receptors to each of our cells are closed, we cannot penetrate our cell with glucose or glycogen, and we cannot feed the, the mitochondria, which makes ATP our energy. And so it just parks itself right there in fat tissues and fat cells. And that's how we gain weight. It's an extremely effective way to gain weight. So I check for insulin resistance as well as uh, diabetes, prediabetes. So if there's sugar imbalance, we will not lose weight. And then if there is a toxic buildup, we will not lose weight. We are all exposed to so many toxins in our country. The FDA has kindly approved 82,000 chemicals for us to use, over 3,000 of which we can eat more than any other country on this planet. So we have a lot of toxic exposure and those toxins typically live in fat cells and fat tissues. So when we have a buildup of that, it's very difficult to lose weight. That's why I have my RGN detox um, to help people. Everybody loses weight on it, but it is not a weight loss program. It um, helps clean out the liver and the organs and the blood to work more efficiently. But those are the five reasons why we cannot lose weight. <laughs> wow that is a lot of chemicals my god because remember reading yeah. an article that you're featured on i believe you mentioned that 200 of them alone we encounter them just before we even get out the home for our daily routines if we exactly have <laughs> exactly i mean think about it your your shampoo your your cologne your um nail polish hairspray your your moisturizer right we and we've been breathing that in if you've been if your sheets have been laundered in in traditional uh, uh, cleaning supplies, we have tons and tons of chemicals that you're breathing in all night long. And then, you know, all the, the, the toiletries that we use and the soaps and the perfumes and all that. So deodorant is a big one that goes right into your bloodstream. So, yeah, we are inundated with chemicals. Yeah, it's like, wow, because when I read that statistic and then you dropping the other ones with the thousands, I'm like, oh, God, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> like, they approve yeah. this poison? <laughs> yeah, about 2,000 a year, regardless of who's in the White House, it's getting done. So, um, and the sad thing, Tom, is most of these chemicals are not even tested. So it's, uh, we are, we have to be very diligent about the chemicals we are using. Europe is, is much more strict than we are. They don't have dyes in their food. They are, have a lot more restrictions than we do, but we, for whatever reason, any chemical is fine. You can put it anywhere. We can eat them. We can, we can, we can swim in them all day long. No issues there. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it it's freaking horrible because I've actually seen a couple articles in the past about how some some products we can't really ship overseas because of all the darn chemicals within them. It's like, dude, we're not going to poison our people with this garbage. What are y'all doing? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's really criminal that um, we we are not looked after a little bit better. But that's why you have to be your own advocate and read labels. Make sure that your cleaning supplies are clean. Make sure that you're not having toxic foods and you know do we need food that is bright orange or yellow or purple or 
you know, these are not natural colors most of the time. So we, we don't really need these things. So it's really important to read labels and understand that if it's not in your pantry, it probably isn't going to be good for you. They come out of a chemical um, lab and we're not chemical, ex we're not science experiments, right? We are people that need to eat food. We were not born. We don't have the equipment to make chemicals. So I say to every new patient who walks into my office, I want you to imagine that your body's just like a sneaker factory, right? You've got all the equipment to make sneakers. If I give you leather, rubber, or canvas, I know we're going to get a sneaker at the end, right? It may change in shape or size or color, but it's going to be a sneaker. That's what you have equipment for, and that's what the raw materials are. And then if I say, oh my goodness, let's put some cell phone parts in your sneaker factory, what would happen, right? <laughs> we would break the equipment, right? And we would never get a sneaker nor a cell phone, right? And so if you imagine that, like, you know, if we went to the Nike factory and wanted to put cell phone parts in, they, they would, you know, call the, you know, the loony bin and say, take these people away because we would break their millions and millions of dollars worth of equipment. And um, so we would have to go to a cell phone factory to put those cell phone parts in. And so I use that example because it kind of gives us a, a visual of, you know, we were born, our mechanics, what, what the equipment we have is to eat foods, things that were crawling on the ground and sprouting from the earth. And all of a sudden we have things that, you know, you know, are, are, are different colors and, and, and they don't even remotely look like food, right? They, 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 you know, some of the candy that we have is just, what is that, right? It doesn't even look like actual food. And it really isn't, you know, it's just a lot of chemicals that they have found to taste good and people get addicted to them. And so the company is happy because they have lots of revenue, but this is not good for us. Um, and we are eating more sugar now than we've ever eaten on the planet. The um, per capita consumption rate is about 152 pounds of sugar per year. And I can tell you, I do not eat, not even remotely a fraction of that. I wouldn't even say I eat a pound a year. And so somebody else is eating my portion. So we are eating a lot of sugar, a lot of chemicals and a lot of sugar. It's not helping us. We're a sicker nation now because of it. Yeah, you can say that again. My God, 152 pounds of sugar per person, huh? A year? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a lot, right? Uh, all righty, well. Another reason why hospitals are filled besides the <laughs> darn pandemic and the fear. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And the people who are going into respiratory failure are people in third stage inflammation. So how do we get into third stage inflammation? Blood sugar is a big one, right? So when you dysregulate your blood sugar, you've got uh, diabetes, you're in third stage inflammation. I look at inflammation numbers all the time on blood tests to determine but these are people who are getting really, really, really sick. We know that vitamin D is a really big factor for immunity. So we know that people who were dying were vitamin D deficient. Um, so it is really important to have your vitamin D levels checked and make sure that you are supplementing with vitamin D and, and you should have vitamin K with your vitamin D for, for the optimal absorption. Oh yeah, I could definitely say that again indeed. That's right. Speaking of absorption, I believe <laughs> folks who may take a little too much of the whole vitamins and the supplements, they might be having some expensive pee, I hear, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yes. Well, you want to make sure that it absorbs. So it's hard to know how does the average consumer know what is absorbable and what isn't. You know, calcium, magnesium, there's different forms of those that they take a few different times to uh, steps for conversion into something absorbable. So, um, you know, we all, it's hard to tell which ones are absorbable, but usually the, the, the higher quality, the more absorbable it is. Um, if you don't have a lot of digestive enzymes, if you don't have a very acidic environment in your gut, it's gonna be difficult for you to absorb things. So really important to make sure you have digestive enzymes, I would say anywhere from age 40 or 45 and older, because as we age, we produce and excrete less and less digestive enzymes. We make pancreatic enzymes and hydrochloric acid. Um, and if you're having any acid reflux or GERD or heartburn, that is a good indication 
that you are not having enough digestive enzymes. It means you cannot digest your food. You don't have enough digestive enzymes in which to break it down. So we create uh, heartburn and, um, and acid reflux. So most times you go to the doctor and the doctor is going to give you an antacid. So they're going to turn off the faucet, but really what you need is digestive enzymes, hydrochloric acid and pancreatic enzymes. So you can break down all your food. Stress is a big player in, um, in disrupting our production of hydrochloric acid and pancreatic enzymes. Zinc uh, deficiency is also a precursor as well as B vitamins. B6 helps a lot with um, pr producing our own uh, digestive enzymes. So it's really critical if you're having any of those, those uh, digestive issues, try taking a digestive enzyme first. And that usually will take care of it. If it doesn't, then um, there may be an ulcer or something like that. But typically it, 99% of the time, it takes care of it. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's right. The Radio Reese is leaving some gems for y'all to take home with you right now, folks. I'm telling you. That's right. She's a walking book of nutritional proverbs, y'all. I'm telling you. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. Some digestive enzymes, indeed. So any examples of those? Um, well, I have a line of, of supplements, so I have my um, Enzyme Max, which is all your pancreatic enzymes plus hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is to break down protein specifically, so there, it's unusual to find both of those in a, a supplement. And in addition, I have ox bile that helps digest fats. So there's your protein, your fat, and um, your carbohydrates, all your macros are broken down with the digestive enzymes. So... Um, there are some on the market. It's hard to find all three. I've never seen another product on the market with all three, but you can absolutely find products with um, uh, all your pancreatic enzymes, betaine, um, and then um, sometimes you can find some with hydrochloric acid, um, but I've never seen one with ox bile as well. Certainly, if you don't have a gallbladder, you um, don't have a storage unit in which to hold your bile, and that's what helps us break down fats. So um, ox bile is really important or any bile salts are important to help us break down our fats. Beets are really helpful. They help decoagulate bile. So if you um, don't have a gallbladder, it's helpful to eat some beets. They're high in sugar, so go easy. But I would say about a half of beet, you know, every, every other day or so is really helpful to um, decoagulate bile, help digest fats. There you go. Beets to beat it. That's what I'm talking about indeed. There you go. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. And something else very important that you mentioned is how stress is an important fact. And I'm pretty sure that's something that a lot of folks have been dealing with even before the pandemic started and it just amplified it since it started. So how has Risa been dealing with stress? With stress? How's, how's it been for you and what you've been doing to keep yourself healthy and just all the nutrition that you've been doing to keep yourself in that state to help out as many people as you do? Yeah, so I am um, I am super busy. I have a very, very busy practice and all the other stuff that I do. So I have to have my A game every day. I don't really want to show up with my B game. I feel better with my A game. So sleep is huge. Sleep is a really, really big thing for stress. I make sure that I get enough sleep. Um, the other thing is exercise. I am pretty uh, addicted to exercise as well. I'm not one of those people who loves exercise, who from birth got up and I won't, you know, I'll wake up at four in the morning to exercise. That's not me. It's never been me. It probably never will be me, but I know how important it is. So I do make sure I am moving my body all the time. And I don't care if I'm walking or if I, I hop on my, my bike, I do a lot of um, my Peloton. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty regular about that, but I am just always in movement. I'm always doing something, lifting weights or I don't care if you hula hoop in your underwear, as long as you're moving and you're doing something, right? I, you could jump rope. You could, you know, there's so many things. You don't have to belong to a gym. You don't have to run a marathon, but um, just move your body every day. It's really, really important to do that. I'm a big hiker. I love that. Um, and I just unplug. Unplugging is really important. Um, having fun, laughing. I mean, when's the last time you had a big belly laugh that you were just crying because you were laughing so hard? That is a really good stress reliever. It helps bring down cortisol. Um, the other thing that we I recommend for stress is um, Epsom salt baths. Epsom salt baths contain a lot of magnesium, which help balance out cortisol naturally. 
um, that exercise and sleep will do it. Um, and eating well, eating well puts, if I don't eat a lot of chemicals, it doesn't put stress on my body. By eating those chemicals day in and day out, it puts a lot of stress on your body. It's a foreign invader, your liver has to process it. Your whole body has to work a little bit harder when you eat foods that, you know, when we're putting cell phone parts in our sneaker factory, right? We just, it has to work harder. We have to figure it out. We have to divide the, the real stuff with the, the, the artificial stuff. And we have to find a way to turn it into an enzyme and process it through the body. So eating clean, I love to eat well. I, I cook a lot of food and I enjoy it. I enjoy eating clean. So that's a really good, uh, that's an integral piece of the puzzle to eat clean um, to, uh, for stress. So all of those things, and I love to have fun. Fun and play is really important. Music and dancing, and um, I do a lot of music and sing on the top of my lungs quite a bit. Ah, uh, there you go, folks. That's right, so hula hoop in your underwear, y'all, and then go hiking afterwards. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, indeed. Who needs H and M? It's H and H. Hula hoop in your underwear and high go hiking after. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. It's a nice visual, indeed. And as you were speaking, like the, it just really came to me the fact that your body likes to really. I guess all of us really we like things to be easy, so. Since we like it to be easy, why don't we make it easier on our own bodies by trying to avoid as much chemicals as we possibly can with the stuff that we put in our mouths? Because, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've heard it before that a lot of Americans especially die more by the spoon than anything else. Exactly. Yeah, food could be our, our greatest form of medicine or our slowest form of poison. And that is really true because if we just keep putting junk in and inflammatory foods and high sugar foods and chemicals in, we are going to break down. Our bodies are just gonna break down. So, um, you know, I, I invite every listener to take two weeks and eat two weeks, nothing from a factory, just from a farm. And if you can do that for two weeks, nothing that has a nutritional label, just things that are, are real from the ground, then um, then see how you feel. See how you feel after two weeks. If you feel better, if your body's functioning, you might lose some weight, you might have less brain fog, digestion works better, um, and not necessarily plant-based, but you know, 60 to 80% of your plate should be plants. That's our living um, greens that we eat. And um, if not that, then for sure, um, you know, and some animal protein, good, clean animal protein. Our animal protein, unfortunately, has also been tainted with a lot of, uh, you know, corn and soy. And uh, unfortunately, cows were not born to eat corn and soy. They were born to eat grass. And um, same thing, we're putting um, cell phone parts in their, fact, in their uh, equipment too. So um, what we have to be careful of what we're eating, what they ate. So we have to be much more mindful than we ever have before, certainly before when I was a kid, for sure. Yeah, and funny enough, it's only been 10 years and they probably made hundreds of changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's right, made hundreds of changes indeed. Heck, even when I was a recent guest on the show, uh, Lorianne Spagna, who uh, she, yeah, mostly... See vegan diet. She she if she eats anything animal related, it's probably a fish because they tend to eat each other. <laughs> mm -hmm, and, exactly. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's pretty interesting, and that's definitely a challenge indeed. Because heck, even with that statistic of a was it a hundred was one hundred fifty two one hundred fifty six pounds of sugar each person consumes. Yeah. Yeah. Every year, it's like they put sugar in everything, and then it's just like imagine the withdrawal period. Like heck, I still remember when a short while where I tried to take myself off of coffee where it was freaking fabulous uh, after about the first week and a half because, you know, that withdrawals <laughs> period is definitely sure. painful. But then it's like, oh, wow, I got even more energy without it. <laughs> right, exactly. And I see that in my office all the time. Yeah, we have a coffee addiction. And the sad thing is you see kids going to school. 
I see it all the time, right? With the Frappuccinos or whatever. And there's like 65 grams or more of sugar in each one of those. We are sending little bodies that have brains that are developing with 65 grams of sugar. The AMA recommends no more than 25 grams per adult a day. And we're already having 65 before you even walk into the front door of the school. So do that day in it. And that's not even including what they're eating, maybe a muffin or a scone or a pumpkin cake or, you know, something. And then of course, after school and then at school and, you know, after dance class, they give you something. The doctor's office gives you a, a lollipop. I mean, it's everywhere. We're inundated. And the sad statistic is, Dom, that one out of every th three children born today will be type two diabetic. One out of three. Yeah. So. Um, our obesity rates are higher than they've ever been. It's, uh, it's affecting our kids. It's affecting all of our health. It's affecting our healthcare insurance. It's affecting everything. So uh, we should be really conscious of what we're putting into our mouth. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a dark business, the medical field. <laughs> it's the dark yeah. side of it. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it is sad unfortunately, but it's, it's run by big uh, food companies that really want you to get addicted for money. So it's, we have to be our own advocate and read our own labels and see how we feel. And, and I don't even think we're really taught to look, to assess how we feel. How do we feel? Do I feel tired? Is this normal? Um, I had a 15-year-old a kid um, I met with a couple months ago who you know, I had chronic, chronic diarrhea all day, every day. And uh, I said, how long has this been going on? He said, two years. So, I mean, did you not think to say something to your mother that this is not right? Something's going on. And sure enough, we found a bunch of stuff going on with him. But we have to have that conversation. We have to feel comfortable to having that conversation with our parents or with our doctors or with somebody saying something's not right. Yeah. And that sounds really painful. Two years of chronic diarrhea, yeah. <laughs> two whole years. All, like, Oh God, no. <laughs> all day. Yeah. Yeah. Poor kid. Didn't want to eat before school because he was just afraid he was in the bathroom all day. It was just crazy. So we don't have to live like that. No, we, we don't. We actually have choices now, which is a right. beautiful thing. <laughs> right. Exactly. We can seek help. That's right. We can seek that help indeed. That's right. That's right, the Risa Grau Nutrition, y'all, I'm telling you. That's right, the RGA Nutrition, she got you covered like a blanket, y'all. That's right, got you covered like a blanket. That's right, maybe even covered like a fruit basket, even though a blanket's probably better for covering. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, since this is far from your first rodeo and the guest side of the game on these podcasts, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, a question that I wished I was asked. So maybe what can we do to fix the food system? And what can we collectively do to make the, the country a better, uh, healthier pl a place? And um, I was sort of referring to that in my previous answer, but that would be vote with your fork. You know, make decisions that do you will not drink a big gulp. I mean, does anybody really need a big gulp of soda? Um, soda is just not good. It has no nutritional value at all. It has just tons and tons and tons of sugar. And, you know, I would say read labels. Be picky about what's going into the building. You know, you, I say to some people sometimes, imagine that your body is like a, a business and you're gonna take it public, right? And you're really protective about the balance sheet because you wanna make sure that your assets are, are increased and your liabilities are decreased, right? So would you go and, and buy a whole new phone system that you don't really necessarily need? Or would you buy all these new computers for everybody in the office that you don't need? Probably not. If you didn't need them, you'd wanna boost your assets, right? Your, and, and decrease your liabilities. So what I say is, is be picky. You know, you're not going to hire somebody who just got arrested for fraud, right? You're going to hire the best. So be picky about what's going into the building. Sometimes I go to Costco and I sit back if I have time and I watch people go up to go get those free samples. And I always watch to see, 
Do they ask what's inside? Are they looking at an ingredient panel? I oftentimes see people trying to sneak in a second one, but I never, ever, ever once have seen anybody ask the, the sampler, what is in this product and, and can I look at the ingredient panel? So we be picky about what's going in. If there's dyes and chemicals and additives and sugars, do not eat these things. You know, I encourage people to, um, you know, take that challenge of two weeks, two weeks without eating anything from uh, a factory and see how you feel. It will make a huge impact. Um, it will give less power to the big box um, companies that are making ma manufacturing chemicals and foods that are not good for us. We're not made to have food live on a shelf for three years and survive a nuclear blast, right? We, we, we should remember how your great grandparents ate, right? We used to, they used to go and, and, and get what they could. And, and we had little small refrigerators, not big ones. We didn't have a refrigerator in the garage. I mean, you know, it's crazy, right? So we didn't have all this food and we just picked what we could eat that day. We cooked it up and then there we had. You know, and you go to places like Italy and in, uh, in Venice, when I was there a few years ago, their markets are really little, their baskets are really little and they go every day, they buy the fresh food every day and they come home and they prepare it. Um, we don't do that. And we eat out more than ever, especially our kids, they order food and have it delivered and um, it's, and it's not real food, it's fake food, it's filled with chemicals. So. I encourage people to, to clean out the garage, take it deep, do a detox twice a year, clean out the chemicals in your body and stop putting them in at great speeds. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Vote with your fork, y'all. That's right. That's right. Folks talk about voting rights. Well, hey, before, <laughs> those are important too, but vote with your fork too, at least. <laughs> right, exactly. Because you won't be able to vote properly unless you put something in your body that'll actually help your body. <laughs> Right, exactly. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. And you're so right about that, especially the eating out piece. I remember a past guest on the show, he was 17, wrote a self-help book, and he mentioned how he's a little <laughs> worried for his old fellow peers of generation because he's thinking, oh, yeah, I'll last. I got a McDonald's meal card. I'll be fine. And it's like, right. oh, God, no. <laughs> right, that's a, exactly. That's a trap. Don't Cooking skills are life skills. You know, my, um, I'm just really adamant about that with my kids that they need to cook. It's a life skill, right? Just like you have to do laundry or, or figure out your finances or, um, you know, anything. Cooking is a life skill. You need to know how to provide for yourself. Yeah, it's true. Tastes yeah. better too. Yeah, it does taste better. And you know what's in it. Right, you can put real food, real, real oils, not rancid oils, not inflammatory oils, um, and no chemicals, no preservatives, no additives, no dyes. You can just make it from food and ingredients that you have in your home, and it's way better for you. Even if you use sugar, it's still going to be better for you, probably. Oh, yeah, because it'll be actual sugar, even though it's still bad compared to corn syrup. <laughs> even though I think a lot of folks starting to move from that, thank God. <laughs> Exactly, exactly, yeah. That's right. The only corn we should focus on is corny jokes, y'all. I'm telling you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The magical corny jokes and days. Oh, my goodness. So a new question I've been torturing guests with, <laughs> even though torturing is probably a bad word for it, is that if they were to describe their particular book as a food item, what would that food item be? If my book was a food item, oh, I would say a huge green leafy salad packed with protein, fat, and fiber. That's what I would say. Ah. Uh, yeah, I've been loving the answers to these questions. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question. I wonder what I'd be curious to hear all the answers, but yeah. <laughs> um, funny enough, um, guy I interviewed early this morning, um, Claude Thomas, his actual answer was a supreme meal, which was kind of a political answer because it's like, in a way, it's not a particular item because the thing is a supreme meal, whatever the supreme meal is for you or himself because he himself he's a 
he's a vegetarian and he took a vow of poverty so a meal for him which is a uh, probably a lot of vegetables and all the other good stuff appeared compared to a person to me like a uh, more meat on their plate it would be a lot different for them since he tends to avoid eating animals so yeah that's that's uh yeah yeah <laughs> well i would consider my salad filled with protein fat and fiber a supreme meal that would be my favorite meal it's got everything you need and every time you eat you have the opportunity to give yourself the best nutrition you can and that is a great way to get great nutrition Oh, well, there we have it, folks. You better look out for that book, The Food Frame. You all, that's right. Get that picture perfect health. Get to take a selfie of yourself in a metaphorical food frame. Indeed, have that supreme meal. That's right. That's right. You'll probably have that magical eight pack that you've been wanting forever. That's right. Maybe even a nine pack if you're in the military. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> or if you're lazy, a four pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's right. all good. That's right. Gotta love the visuals here. It takes you way that's out of right. your magical comfort zone. All out of the magical box. <laughs> well, speaking of comfort zone, we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive. And that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're a 25 again, but this time in the current year of 2021, with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? Wow. Uh, what advice would I give to myself? Um, I would say, go for it. Just go for it. Just try it all. Just do it all. Go for your passion. Um, I did that. I just did it later in life, and um, I didn't. I I didn't know my passion then. So I think if I knew my passion. At 25, I would have just gone for it. So go for it. Even if you, it turns out not to be your passion, even if it turns out to be the wrong road, go for it. Yeah. And be kind to yourself and just find the lessons in that, in that, uh, in that journey. There's lots of lessons to be had. You just got to be watching for them. Ah, yeah, that's right. Be kind to yourself and play some Connect Four. That's right, go for it, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I like that yes. game. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. All righty, good. That's right. Yeah. So that's right. So, Risa will send you a free detox package if you send a TikTok video of yourself hula hooping in your underwear while playing Connect Four with somebody. There you go. Hula hooping <laughs> in my underwear while playing Connect Four. I like it. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> Probably a lot safer it. than the great challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Probably safer than the great challenge. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, how oh, funny. Oh, yeah, that's right. Funny with all the bunnies, maybe even the chocolate bunnies. That's right. That's right, indeed. Well, for those who want to hop on your magical site and keep up with all that you're doing, maybe buy some of the wonderful products that you have for folks to devour and to hopefully detox and become better and not butter what's the best way for folks to do so and keep up with all that you're doing um you can find me on risa grew nutrition r-i-s-a-g-r-o-u-x like x-ray nutrition um and all my social media risa grew nutrition my um twitter facebook all that TikTok. uh we just started doing and then um i do have a podcast myself called the diet dilemma we talk a lot about nutrition. We dive deep into um, some diseases and food frame diets and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's how you can find me. Oh, yeah, that's right. Find her, y'all. That's right. Find her. Dive into the Magical Podcast. There's 10 episodes of it now. That's right. Hopefully there's going to be more soon, maybe. Yep. Yep. 
it's uh, I haven't been I've been busy with the book and some TV things and some other things and we're working on um, online classes right now so we're really busy but um, yeah I love to uh, do podcasts and help educate people so we're we're working on it. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Cool. 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 Because I'm like, wow, ten episodes. All right. Where's the rest of? It? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only so many hours in a day, Dom. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> yeah. You can say that again. <laughs> yeah. That's right, folks. Yeah. So there you have it. Check it all out in the show notes. Follow on the social medias. And she's got some online courses coming up soon. Maybe leave a virtual apple on the desk. That's right, folks. That's right. Professor Reese is on the job, y'all. That's right. Be on the lookout for that new magical book. It'll be shiny and tasty. Just don't eat the pages, though. Don't, <laughs> don't eat the pages. Yes, yeah, they're not edible. <laughs> they're not gluten-free. <laughs> There you go. A sales pitch from the book. It's not gluten free. Yeah. <laughs> not that I know of. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I don't think anyone will find out. Let's hope they don't. So, any parting words before we close up shop? <laughs> you know, just take care of yourself. Get your blood work taken. Find your roadmap. Find out what is missing. Find out what you need. Find out why. Um, what your ailments are, your your root causes are. Um, take a look inside. Get your stool test done. Um, you know, we I found uh, cancer in a young guy, thirty five year old, who had zero symptoms. We found colon cancer very very early, and it was amazing. Um, he was too young; they would never would have given him a colonoscopy, and he had no symptoms. So. We find things all the time in those tests that um, we always need to take a look inside. So look at your root causes, do the investigating. Um, most uh, uh, insurance companies don't cover comprehensive testing. So take it into your own hands, find a functional nutritionist or a functional practitioner and um, look at your roadmap and, uh, and, and continue to see those, the, the signs and uh, address them. Eat healthy, eat foods from the farm, not from the factory, and um, find your food frame. And you, too, will have optimal health, and uh, you'll bring your A-game every day. How's it going, my friend? I'm so glad you made it to the end. That shows that you are an uncommon finisher, and I am so grateful for you sharing your ears, your attention, and your time to this wonderful podcast to do something that will take yourself to the next level. And for everybody else involved in this wonderful program, share it with at least three people in your network so that way more folks can not only catch the fire that is on this podcast but can also be inspired to be their best advance others to advance yourself